What is up, guys? We haven't done this one in a while, but it's the return of the podcast for one for one thing. Well, only having me and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. G Shadow Zero Zero Seven here once again returning. Yep, and we're just going to be talking about Gamescom basically because that's one of the only things that uh, happened this week. Um, and let's go ahead. The left direction of the Nodes View podcast. Not dead forever, just it's been dead for a little bit, and it's probably going to continue to be dead after this until stuff continues, news, or sh- anything comes out. All right, so we're going to talk, be talking about Gamescom, and let's go ahead and talk about um, Microsoft's podcast. Now, keep in mind, I stay up all night to watch these um, these conferences, and they, they, they did not disappoint. They were both pretty good conferences on both things. Each of them had their own point and let's go ahead and get right into Microsoft. So the biggest thing coming out of this is that Tomb Raider will be a timed exclusive on the Xbox One and that's pretty huge to compete and more news has come out. He said Phil Spencer states that he wants to compete with Uncharted and Tomb Raider is probably one of the ways to compete with an action adventure like Uncharted. What do you think, G Shadow? Well, it's well, it's a very good move that we're going to have a time exclusive today. I mean, because that means People will actually have something interesting to play in one for once. Um, at least until something the order comes. But um, when it comes down to it, Tomb Raider and Uncharted. I mean, Uncharted is obviously based off Tomb Raider. And Tomb Raider was, of course, the original action-adventure game that's, that's basically like a survival-type, probably like survival archaeology-type game. Um. Mm-hmm. And um, competing with Uncharted, I think, would be a good idea, considering the fact that Uncharted 4 is on its way after it was announced at E3. Which, yeah, and they should be coming out around the same time. Tomb Raider is scheduled to launch next year in the holidays, and I'm pretty sure that's when Uncharted 4 is scheduled to release. Or it's 2016 for Uncharted, but a game that can compete, but it is accordingly a timed exclusive but no words or announcements saying that it is coming to PS4 as soon as the time exclusive deal is up. Um, you get to see, and then we talk about the Master Chief Collection. Not really too much to talk about on that, except for Sanctuaries announced as a remastered map. They didn't really focus so much on Halo. Um, well, not really. You want to keep the 15th secret, I guess. Yeah, they want to keep... They announced the Halo channel, which is like... An updated Halo waypoint. That's pretty cool, but nothing really big Halo news coming out like it did at E3. Um, but overall, I mean, those were the that was what's some. Uh, they also talked about Forza, everybody's favorite game. Mm. I mean, it's Forza. Yeah. It's you're gonna race. I mean, it's it's Forza. But um, the big another big thing was Quantum Break actually getting gameplay sh- shown, and the the gameplay looks amazing. And this is really cool because how it's scheduled to work is you play a chapter of the game, and it ships with a TV show. But the stuff that you do in the game is gonna change how the TV show works. So each TV show is gonna be different. Because of your actions. Kind of like Mass Effect, but then you get to see a TV show on how your actions affected the world. Oh, wow. So, that was pretty cool. Had to get my gum out. But uh, that was an awesome idea. Quantum Bake looks fantastic. What do you think of it, G Shadow? These, got, these were guys who did it on a way. Yep. And I played through that game. Loved that game. I'm going to say Quantum Bake's going to be a pretty, deep, really, really good game. Yeah. Um, it, it looks graphically good. The gameplay looks pretty solid. I mean, it looks like a game you can get into. Yeah. Probably not for every place, but probably a game that most people can get into. Like, um, I want to wait. Like, uh, I don't Well, yeah, Remedy has made, I mean, nothing really ever bad. They, they just take time, and they'd hardly ever come out with the game, so. But take time, and it shows. Just look at Valve. Anytime they take time on a game, it turns into gold. I mean. Yeah. Um, but 
that was the big, I guess, keynote to the Microsoft press conference. Um, they announced, like, this new Tycoon game. Like, if you've ever played, like, any of, like, the Sim, like, I don't want to say, like, Sim Tycoon games. If you ever played any of those, like, on the PS1 or PS2, it's basically like that. It looked pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, they didn't show an actual gameplay. And they also showed off, uh... More Sunset Overdrive. That game looks awesome. Fun. I saw that. Um, some of the gameplay in when I went over, I went to see uh, God of Awful Trolls film. Don't ask me why. Um, well, actually, it wasn't really God of Awful, but well, in whatever case, I've seen the game. It looks stunning. It looks really stunning. And it mm. looks like Borderlands crossed in with Lot Left for mm. Dead, crossed in with open world stuff crossed in with a bunch of stuff really it's, it's like a really over the top actual fun game that's not depressing or nor is it like all drama it's all about basically having fun blowing the shit out of zombies and whatnot yeah mutants and it's just insomniac that's what insomniac that's what i love about insomniac is they don't they don't think games are these things that have to be taken seriously and they just have fun with it, just like an actual gamer would, and it shows. So, phenomenal job. It looks awesome, and... Yeah. Well, I do miss them making Ratchet and Clank games. That, that series should have been dead a long time ago. Well, I mean, they... I, I'll always say I'm a huge Ratchet and Clank fan, and I nearly love every Ratchet and Clank, but, like, the past three haven't been all that great. No, no respect to Ratchet the rest playing franchise, but I think that franchise like way past its prime. I mean, Naughty Dog knew when to stop when it came to Jack. Soccer Punch knew when to stop when it comes to Sly. So I'm like, oh no, we're just gonna keep making games to play for on Sony. Uh, I mean, just all for one wasn't it wasn't <laughs> bad. <laughs> it's not that it's bad. It's just that it's not that it's not Ratchet and Clank. style game, which I guess they were trying to go for that to make it fun for everybody, but who the, who, I'm pretty sure no one, not everyone wants to play, will be a fan of Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's a good, and then it was this, then they had like a tower defense game that looked not, it doesn't even look like Ratchet and Clank. Nothing impressive on that. And then, then they got into the Nexus, which that looks like an actual Ratchet and Clank game. I played a little bit of it at my friend's house. It was a fun game. But it was relatively short, so that's my only complaint about that. But anyway, we're talking about the continuing the Microsoft press conference. I mean, um, I mean that's almost it, really. Um, they showed Ori in the Blind Forest more. Oh my gosh, that game looks stunning. Uh, if you're a fan of side-scrolling platforming, this is a game for you, hands down. I I what were you saying? I said, I guess it does. Yeah, I, I think Oi in the Mind Force is an easily contender for Indie Game of the Year. And I don't know how it's going to play, but even maybe a contender for Game of the Year. But I don't know if it's a retail actual game, like a full-fledged like $60 title, or it's like an okay like $50, $15 type thing. So, we'll see. But uh, that was basically Microsoft's press conference focusing highly on the AAA titles because... Let's face it, Sony's dominating the console market, selling, going into 10 million units being sold, while Microsoft has only sold, I think, probably around 5 million, because in an early report, they said they shipped 5 million, so probably, and that was about two months ago, so probably by now, they've probably sold 5 million. That's just a rough estimate. Okay, thank you, that's probably going to change when Sunday Overdrive comes. Yeah, and with this call, of, and they also had this Call of Duty Advanced Warfare bundles and FIFA bundles, and yeah, I didn't. I'm not a big soccer fan, so I don't give two craps about FIFA, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, okay, let's go ahead and talk about Sony's press conference, and the Sony conference was all mainly actually focused on indie titles. Like Microsoft did have a, like some indie. Indie stuff, they had, like, uh, Smite coming to the Xbox One, and this, just some cool-looking indie games. I, I can't name them all, but... And then Sony has these 
massive indies coming. Well, not I don't want to say massive, but the pretty big indie games like DayZ, which I think is pretty bad. But um, this this conference then was mainly focused on indies, and some of them look good. I can't name them all. I can't go into detail. I can because the indies, and I haven't done all that much research on them. There was a game where uh, it's focusing so much on these indie games when they be focusing on their own games. Well, I guess they're like, oh, well, you know, we're we're selling a lot. We don't need to show a lot of big things this year. Just, yeah. just show a bunch of stupid stuff. Yeah, you can sell, you can show all this stuff, but at the end of the day, indies aren't gonna win you a console war. Eventually, people are gonna get bored and say, "I'm done. I'm not waiting around for Uncharted Four or maybe another next Sly game. I'm not gonna continue waiting around just to play these indie titles. They're all fun, but only get about ten hours out of them." So, let's see what else so I can get off here. Um. But the AAA titles they talked about were, uh, nothing. Got, nothing. You got the Order. Yeah. Uh, they didn't really show anything besides Bloodborne, honestly. Sure. Well, uh, Journey's going to PS4. Oh. Why? I don't get it. I mean, it's probably, probably because they, Journey was probably released way too late in the, in the era, and they probably want the game on a different boss or whatever. I just, I don't, meh. Yeah. Anyway, um, they showed Bloodborne at the beginning of the conference, and that it looks great. It's by the person who has made Dark Souls 1 and Demon Souls. It's going to be hard, but he, according to a few reports, the game's a lot faster paced than Dark Souls, but the combat's so similar. It's just a matter of picking, not picking the right time. When you get attacked, you're going to have to attack back. And... This is one of the reasons I plan on getting a PS4 in the late winter uh, type of deal. Software really is the point. Yeah. yeah. And I think. Yeah. I well, go ahead and say what you're gonna say because I mean, there's not yeah. much to talk about Sony. Bloodborne is a pretty, pretty. Uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's obviously made by the guys who did Dark Souls and Demon Souls, the Space of Souls series. It's from yeah. what, I, what I know. Um, and here it looks like it's gonna be like a little bit more modern because from what I've seen, yeah, guns, rifle, yeah, and pretty wicked looking weapons. And from what I heard, it's probably gonna be very hard. Yep. Probably, I'm sure it's gonna be harder than Dark Soul than the Soul series. It's probably, it actually, would probably be harder. I don't think they're gonna make it as hard because it, I don't think. I think it's going to be a little, like, ch I think it's going to be challenging, but not near as tough as the Soul series, because that series is known for being hard. Like, you're going to die a lot. This game, it, it accordingly is a spiritual successor to Demon Souls, which I heard is honestly the hardest game in the Soul series. So, it could be really hard. I don't know. I'm going to play it. I think I'm going to enjoy it. But, besides that, there really isn't that much to talk about on the hardware, but they did announce this really cool, neat idea, um, it's called the PlayStation 4 Share Play, and what this is, is it brings back the idea of split-screen co-op when we all were younger, you know, you had your friends over, you were gonna play some Smash Bros, you were gonna play some PS2, you are gonna play some Donkey Kong 64, I played that multiplayer, but GoldenEye, all that stuff, you gotta get together and play a good old game, like the old days. Um, and what it is, is basically, I, basically, without the p person purchasing a game, they can play the game you have, but the problem, but the kicker is, is that it's not as great as it seems. Like, you want to play this game with me? Go ahead and play it. That person cannot be, the person that is letting the person play cannot play his PS4, and I'm pretty sure that person can only play for so long before it is taken away from him. So, it is a cool idea. It's like a really cool demo. And Sony has all these great ideas that they're beating Microsoft to the punch that Microsoft promised in the console. So, I think that's one way they're winning with this PlayStation Now and then the PlayStation... It's called like PlayStation Share. All these cool things... 
that are going to come out, they're focusing more on the actual, I guess, hardware inside the console than the actual games, which, unfortunately, I don't think will do as well. But Sony is in the lead massively, so I'm wrong, I guess. We'll just go ahead and run down some of the other stuff they announced. Wild, Scareaway on. Oh, yeah, Tailway Unfolded, that looked pretty cool. The Wild was cool. It was like a, basically this person on an island. You, okay, yeah, that was a good move, cool, was bringing up the indie games, because I had no idea what half of them were. But the Wild was really cool. Um, looked neat, but accordingly, it's supposed to be really short. Very short, though. Yeah, that's a problem. It's like an indie game. So. I mean, it's an indie game, and... They're obviously doing something right, but sooner or later, people will get bored with just playing indies. Indie games can be pretty long. I mean, from what, from what I've known, I think Super Meat Boy was an indie game. That game was like pretty long. Which apparently, <laughs> Team Meat is supposed to announce something relatively soon. And people are speculating it's Super Meat Boy 2. Speculating. Might be. Might not be. So, but, um, back to the point, but talking about indie games can be good if they're done right and in the case of certain games they were um not sure much about wild or tearaway unfolded because i haven't seen much of them yet but mm. they could probably be potential of indie games that are done right the problem is that they're indie games indie games don't really have anything to do with your core console itself yeah and i'm not saying sony needs to make be making multiple triple a titles every single week like every six months i'm just saying you have to eventually make some and the big selling point on to buy a ps4 this year is to play drive club yay for racing it's a racing game i'm gonna play it for like three hours be bored and want to sell it <laughs> every other racing game though anyway yeah but in my opinion it goes to Xbox One. They're getting exclusives out the door, which could be good. They're putting them out there, but Sunset Overdrive is right now one of my most anticipated games this year. And I give it to Microsoft again. Microsoft is... The conferences are better than Sony's, but they dug a hole early with all this online crap and not being able to play used games. Or no, it was gonna happen. They blatantly said it was gonna happen, but fans said, I'm not buying your console, and they it was like, oh god, okay, we're, we're taking it out, we're taking it out, it's a day one update, and then that, that was fixed. And of course, and of course, Sony took the advantage of that, that one year, and pretty much rubbed it and tried to rub it in Microsoft's face by saying, oh, we have all this stuff, you can play used games, you can... Yeah, they were basically, it. the old saying... Sega does what Nintendo don't, and Sony was saying Sony PS4 does what Xbox don't. And here we are a year later, and Sony, and Sony thinking that oh we we got a bunch of crap, we got we got like a bunch of consoles sold, so let's not show a lot of new interesting things and just put up a bunch of mini games for a couple for like twenty minutes or so. Yeah, it's a, like indie games are cool. But they do have a loaded lineup next year with Bloodborne, The Order, um, what else? Little Big Planet 3. Well, no, Little Big Planet 3, oh, that's their selling point, Ghouls. That's what they're saving up for, because Little Big Planet 3 does come out this year for PS4 and PS3. I got, now we got, now we got some more ones here. We got Until Dawn. Never, uh, oh yeah, and No Man's Sky, if that comes out next year, which is a massive selling point for their console. So they do have blockbusters next year, but yeah. this year, it, no. I don't know, Microsoft, if I'm guaranteeing, I would say right now, if, if they did not make those stupid rules at the beginning, Microsoft could be in right now, maybe, it could be tied maybe around, maybe like 7 million units instead of... Those, maybe like the 3 million that had 360s and said, I'm not putting up with Microsoft's BS, I'm buying a PS4. And of course, you got, what well, was the other thing they announced? Oh, yeah, they announced uh, Shadow of Mortar, which actually looks kind of interesting. Yeah, that also, they, they did announce some AAA games, but 
I mean... Infamous First Light, which is another infamous game. Well, no, that's a DLC to Second Son. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't want to like keep up on like the triple the that stuff because all they are getting is exclusive content. So I mean, it's not a huge win for PS4, but because it is coming to Microsoft and the same. Course, the breaking news: Destiny be coming out now, becoming the most pre-ordered new IP in GameStop's history. Oh yeah, that that doesn't honestly surprise me, but it really wasn't. I saw it on my way. Mm -hmm. They've a game off the ass since 2012. Yeah, Destiny, you know, was pushed. Activision pushed nearly all they've got into it and said, we're going all in with this, Bungie. You course, can't disappoint. Of course, Sony paying Bungie a crap ton of money to actually support from other game, more so on PS4 and PS3, or basically most of the support, more on the Sony side than they did on Microsoft, and of course, a lot of dedicated Bungie fans are ticked off, and I don't want to get go through it because I'm just gonna go with it. Yeah, that's that's a smart way to go, Ghouls. Good move. Uh, but I guess that's pretty much it for the podcast. G Shadow, who do you think won Gamescom? Eh, me, me. Oh, yeah, we didn't agree with it. I I said Microsoft won overall conference wise. I I. I would say I would want to play more games on Xbox at the moment with the exclusives of Rise of the Tomb Raider, Sunset Overdrive, the Master Chief Collection. Uh, I would say Microsoft won, yeah, but let's see here. I guess there's really nothing to talk about regarding Nintendo then. No, Nintendo well, wasn't no. there. So. Uh, right. but, um, so yeah, I guess Microsoft was overall better. If you like Triple A, Microsoft won. If you like indie, Sony won miles, miles. Yeah, so Sony. I mean, this is going to be a Sony fan, yeah, folks. This is going to be a Sony fan myself. They really need to like realize that just because they sold a crap ton more than Microsoft's console, that doesn't mean they should they should start pulling one crap out of their ass by giving us a bunch and bunch of indie games. They should what we want the games that they are promising and for the most part they did that but it wasn't it was probably like either very quick or it wasn't long enough or it wasn't de de detailed enough yep and, and I guess that's that's pretty much it that's all I gotta say I mean all I gotta say really gotta alright well I guess that ends it for this one guys um uh, the podcast is probably not going to be back for at least another couple, I don't know how long. Um, Maybe weeks, months. I mean, school, school is starting, starting back up soon. Their final year, so... Uh, yeah, and then then there's just got to be news to talk about, so... And there really hasn't been. Uh, yeah, if you want my thoughts on SummerSlam, the pay-per-view was shit. Don't buy the replay. Don't buy the WWE Network. G-Shadow, uh, you can go ahead and...